The Russian military command foresaw Ukraine's invasion of the Kursk region and had been developing plans to prevent it for several months. This is evidenced by captured documents from the Russian Interior Ministry, FSB and Army from the Kursk region, which Ukrainian soldiers shared with journalists from The Guardian. Some of the documents are printed orders sent to various units, while others are handwritten journals recording events and problems at specific positions. The earliest entries are dated to late 2023, while the most recent documents are dated just six weeks before Ukraine launched its invasion of the Kursk region on August the 6th. Most of the documents are from units of the 488th Guards Motor Rifle Regiment, in particular the 2nd Company of the 17th Battalion. The publication writes, Documents seen by The Guardian also show Russian concerns about morale among soldiers in the Kursk region. Problems were exacerbated by the suicide of a soldier at the front who was said to have been depressed for a long time because of his service in the Russian army. To prevent such cases, however, unit commanders have been instructed to identify soldiers who are not mentally prepared to perform their duties or are prone to deviant behavior and to organize their retraining and transfer to military medical institutions. In addition, soldiers should receive 5 to 10 minutes a day, as well as an hour once a week, for political classes aimed at maintaining and improving the political, moral and psychological state of the personnel. A Ukraine war analyst told Business Insider that while watching this conflict, he's been continually surprised by how poorly trained Russia's soldiers are. Even when he thinks they can't get any worse, they somehow find a way. I find myself being surprised with the new depths of how poor the Russian individual soldier quality is. George Barros, a Russia analyst at the Institute for the Study of War, a US think tank, said, Each batch of new recruits gets progressively worse as Russia rushes them off to battle, he said. It's becoming really difficult for me to see what other additional shortcuts they could take, other than maybe deploying just people unfit for service, such as people with disabilities or who are too old. But the bar is very, very low at this point, Barros said. Captured Russian soldiers, war experts, Ukrainian troops and the Western intelligence have all pointed to Russian troops being poorly trained and treated as disposable throughout the war. The poor training, coupled with the intensity of the war, has resulted in quick deaths. Russia's losses have risen recently as Russian troops continue to suffer from deficiencies in training. US intelligence estimated in December, that Russia had lost 87% of the troops it had before the start of its full-scale invasion, meaning it started the new year without the vast majority of its professional army, which had its own problems. It is now largely fighting with a replacement force that's been hastily thrown together. Artillery shells sold by Indian arms makers are being diverted to Ukraine by European buyers, with New Delhi not intervening to stop the trade despite protests from Moscow. The transfer of ammunition to support Ukraine's defense has been going on for more than a year, Reuters reports, citing Indian and European government and defense officials and an analysis of customs data. However, Indian government and defense industry sources told Reuters that Delhi produced only a very small amount of the ammunition used by Ukraine, with one official estimating it was less than 1% of the total arms Kiev imported since the war. Among the European countries that send Indian ammunition to Ukraine are Italy and the Czech Republic, according to a Spanish and a senior Indian official, as well as a former top manager of Yantra India, a state-owned company whose ammunition is used by Ukraine. Indian officials and defense industry representatives said India was monitoring the situation but had taken no action to restrict supplies to Europe. Delhi, long the world's largest arms importer, also sees the prolonged war in Europe as an opportunity to boost its nascent arms export sector. Indian sources say, Indian Defense Minister Rajnath Singh had earlier said defense exports exceeded $2.5 billion in the last financial year and that Delhi wants to increase them to around $6 billion by 2029. Meanwhile, Reuters reports that customs records show that in the two years before Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, 
three major Indian ammunition makers, Yantra, Munitions India, and Kalyani Strategic Systems, exported $2.8 million worth of ammunition components to Italy and the Czech Republic, as well as Spain and Slovenia, where defense contractors have invested heavily in Ukraine's supply chains. And from February 2022 to July 2024, this figure rose to $135.25 million, including finished ammunition, which India began exporting to four countries. The Kremlin has raised the issue at least twice, including during a July meeting between Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and his Indian counterpart, three Indian officials said. Lavrov pressed his counterpart about Indian ammunition used by the Ukrainians, complaining that some of it was made by state-owned Indian companies, according to an Indian official with direct knowledge of the meeting.